So yeah, welcome back to Metal Trenches. I'm your host, Flight of Icarus with MetalTrenches.com. And we're going to talk about the history of metalcore and a bunch of other stuff too. But I want to introduce my guests first. I've got the band Leave. They are about to drop their new album, Dead Language, uh, this Friday, right? August 6th? Awesome. Cool. So let me, I will play a little clip of that too once I edit it in right here. That was the beginning of the end. But that out of the way, maybe you could all just introduce yourselves and what instruments you play. I'm Brian Rivera. I play uh, guitar and lead. Tom, I play bass. I'm Chris. I play drums. Uh, Mike, I play guitar. I'm Dan. I do vocals. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> well, good to have you all here. I wanted to start just sort of by asking, how far do you all go back when it comes to metalcore? Like, what's the first album maybe you remember listening to? And then also, like, when you think of metalcore as a genre, what what is that, like, defining album to you? Oh, man. I, I, for <laughs> me, I'll honestly say the first one I ever heard was uh, Opposite of Summer by Poison the Well. Hell yeah. That you know, I'm I'm only 32, but I think I was in like sixth grade, and my buddy showed me that, and I was like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> Dang, that's wild. <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on that opposite of December kick too. That and Jasmine's Lullaby from Seven Angels, Seven Plagues. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a nice one. Deeper cut. I uh, I think so. When I was like 15 or 16, something like that, this first like shitty band that i was in where it's like you know you're, you're it was metalcore hardcore pop punk whatever whatever it was for the <laughs> fucking day but we opened up for poison the well when they were touring for you come before you they had just released it which is so and, wild yeah just i remember i got there during the sound check and they were playing uh the view from here is a brick wall oh fuck and yeah <laughs> doing the, the bass line in that and stuff and i was like whoa like what is this you know what i mean it definitely definitely got me super into it yeah and you and i have had plenty of conversations on the side about poison the well so the opposite of december is definitely my pick but my personal favorite is you come before you that's like one of my favorite albums of all time yeah yeah and so i would think in terms of metalcore history maybe like one era before that so like botch and dead guy and like all that stuff up until i don't know i want to say like what 2010 like when that like third and fourth wave came on and it's like super we don't poppy. really talk about that yeah, <laughs> exactly so that's where it ends <laughs> yeah, things went through a bit of a shift i want to really talk through like the the origins through kind of like the golden age so to speak and then yeah things started to kind of slide after that mm -hmm. uh, for me definitely zayo is like uh I, I wouldn't call them like the creators of it I'm they sure. go way back though it's, yeah. they I, I don't know i mean i know they've been around forever but in, in my eyes They've only put out one bad record and I, I don't want to say that but great <laughs> chaos like for me that's like that's the only one i'm like hey we don't really talk about that one but, uh, that, that's a band that has consistently put out phenomenal fucking records since yeah. then and I, I i have such a a deep love for that band yeah it's funny well, you should say that too because just yesterday i put up my zeo album tier list and so i was oh, just going that? back and listening to all of them and Crimson Man, Court was number one for me this year so far. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's like barely even like a metalcore album, but it's like so much more than that. And they're so cool that like every album kind of sounds different. Like they yeah. never kind of do the same I, thing. They always have that. Um, it, it, like, oh, I'm listening to a Zayo record. It's yeah. just, it, it, the songwriting gets better. It gets doomier. It gets more like uh, post metal for lack of better word. Yeah. Better. But uh, I, I, I love that band. The uh, song you showed me off the new album, I was like, yo, this is fucking nuts, man. It the is. Last, especially uh, The Web. I love that song. I love that song. I just love everything Norma Jean's ever done. Yeah, no, dude, Norma Jean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait, they, wait, they had records after the first one? <laughs> eight, uh, eight, singer switch. Eight, eight. But uh, actually, now that we mention it, thinking of bands that put out records that sound different but you can always tell it's them i think 
he is legend. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Okay, it's a different band every every album, but no. you always know it's them. You into them at all? I haven't really listened to them a, a lot, so I'll have to like dig into that more. There's like so many things that I like. I love discovering stuff that I haven't like really dug into. By the way, Dan, if you could lean a little bit more to your left, like you're there, you go, <laughs> so I can see you all. You don't want to see me, man. <laughs> <laughs> did everyone? So did everyone get a chance to answer? Uh, yeah, I can't. Think. I mean, for me, just Norma okay. Jean, just all the way across. The I mean, board. with you, like, and then if if like I don't know if you could count Slipknot, but that like was a big band for me that got yeah. me into like everything as far as like oh this is metal. Yeah, you know, like, I, I if I were to say it, it'd probably be that. Yeah. 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 Slipknot, the, the self-titled so Slipknot, not metal core, but yeah, like, yeah. Still, yeah. But still, I will agree. The self-titled Slipknot album is the album that kind of like got me truly into metal. I was just talking about that too, since you know Joey just died, and I was just like, man, that's crazy, because I can remember the day my friend put that in my disc player, and I heard it for the first time, and was like, what the fuck is this shit? Oh, yeah. Like, and really, his drum sound was a big part of that too, with the big pingy snare drums, like super tight sound, and just like all the fills he does. It's it's wild, it's so fucking cool. awesome. What would you all consider to be uh, like? Actually, just, oh, go ahead. I was just I was just listening to that the other day, and like it's it's just so heavy. It is. <laughs> it's, 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 like, it's just so heavy. It's, it's awesome. Nuts. But uh, anyway, go on. <laughs> oh yeah. So obviously. Metalcore, I mean, we were kind of talking a little bit about like stuff going way back. What would you consider to be like the first Metalcore album? I can hear a lot of different answers to this. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not Mr. Uh, historian when it comes to, uh, I'm more of a post hardcore guy myself. Honestly. <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm I'm more hardcore, like, that's great too. Three or four March of Flames and that Yo, kind Fear of Before shit. was the jam. <laughs> Hell yeah. And the heavy, heavy Lolo was like really good. Number 12. Yep. Was like number I, 12 like, man for me, yeah. like, it was amazing like um but i remember i i saw number 12 looks like you heavy heavy low low he's legend coalesce and converge on the same bill that's oh, a sick that show right there factory like the old knitting factory in new york city like years ago and that was when i first like got my feet when i was like i want to play guitar like this <laughs> yeah, this is serious <laughs> you, you can kind of coalesce yeah at i guess the beginning you can of yeah. like the first couple bands playing that kind of music. I guess, yeah. I, I don't like, yeah, yeah. I mean, their, first, their first EP <laughs> was in like 96, 97. Yeah, Coalesce goes, really. they go back. I, I got curious because like I, I've known for a while like some of the Forerunners, but I was like, I really want to trace this back like as far as I can without it getting into like the proto stuff. Because I get some people arguing that like Pro Mags kind of like was a yeah. big influence but they're not like truly a metalcore band so i was like okay what's like the first album on here that i actually consider a metalcore album and it was 1994 with converges halo in a haystack i, I was literally just gonna oh, say yeah. how about we cut the yeah. bullshit Converge is amazing that was a huge like with this album at least like i, I don't know like when we first started this shit it was how can we take like converges sounds kind of try to make it our own thing but have the influences of all the shit that like we grew up listening to as well yeah, blend all the blend guitars, everything together yeah. like, you know have, have maybe a couple more blast beats here yeah. a couple more breakdown -y shits here and there that but, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's but, funny before i even joined this band excuse me i had no idea who the fuck converge was and then he showed that's me wild yeah, yeah i had no idea but wow. <laughs> we should, like, and, you know, i showed i showed him that jane doe live set Yo, oh, <laughs> that, fuck yeah the first song i was like this is insane insane and for me, that's like if, if you want to just go ahead and uh, call it like the first album that really mattered, I would probably say like, you know, they had a couple of things before, but like Jane Doe, when I heard that, that was like the light bulb went on and it was like, as soon as that album comes on, it's so fucking abrasive and ugly. And it, it's just like, how do you make guitar sound like that? How do you make drums? Yeah. Sound like that? Well, how does a, a, a vocalist scream and sound like that, you know? That, that for me that was like the big yeah. light bulb moment absolutely and it's so cool too that they're like still putting out some of their best albums to this day like yeah. for them to go that far back and still like 
I feel like each album comes out and I'm like, fuck, I think this is even better than the last one. It's I love it's that sounding Eve, uh, that song Eve. It, it's it, that, that was insane. Uh, I feel like you have to say Jane Doe is your favorite. For me, uh, You Fail Me is always going to be my favorite album. You Fail Me is great. That opening is ridiculous. Yep. I love that. I love the opening to that album. Gives me goosebumps every time. <laughs> it's just so anthemic. For sure. I'm trying to think who else is like, I mean, Glassjaw had an EP. Glass and like, Glass. right? <laughs> like, Glassjaw started in like 93, and El Mark EP came out in like 96. But before that, when they were Sons of Abraham, they were putting out metalcore shit in like Wait, 94. El Mark was that earlier yeah. before everything. Whoa. Yeah, it was it was interesting looking back and seeing where things lined up on the timeline too. Because again, speaking of Zayo, so if we go to 1995, we've got kind of four big releases here. We've got Earth Crisis with Destroy the Machines, Integrity with Systems Overload, Dead Guy with Fixation on a Coworker, and Zayo with All Else Failed. That's a pretty big. <laughs> Like I, still I not fully formed, but until um, Blood and Fire, like that's when that's when it, it really picked up for me. Yeah, they hit their stride with that one for sure. That was definitely of of their earlier albums. That's definitely my favorite. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was a funeral god guy. <laughs> hey, <you're still> <laughs> god, the ultimate concept. yeah that's that was that's one of my top tier ones right there because that's when they get the more like math core influences really coming front and center and it's like a more focused album too i know a lot of people really love liberate which is a great album but it's so I'm like this for me <laughs> which one uh liberate yeah that would that for me that's that's got one of I think a lot of people would pick that one and and for good reason because that one's great too but just in like I said every album's different so oh good stuff I won't go through every year I have on here but just like we if we want to talk about coalesce again give them rope is in 1997 alongside you've got hate breed you got more integrity 18 visions I wasn't I didn't realize 18 visions with lifeless uh that's 1997 too 18 visions yeah I didn't get into them until uh, Ink uh, Ink Runs Dry, I think it was called. Yeah, I I, I got think a, a song on a Trust Kill sampler. Yeah, Remember back the day you buy albums and it actually yeah, would come yeah, with like a yeah, little yeah, sample. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's when I became aware of them too. I don't like group them in with like the '90s group, but they were right there. So that was kind of an interesting one. And then of course we also have Shy Halud with Shy uh, Hearts yeah. Once Nourished with Hope and Compassion. And a profound hatred of man, according to what I had. No, those both came out in the same year. I'm not sure if that's fully accurate, but in any case. I really liked uh, Shai Halud, Ludabella. Yeah. I always <laughs> heard about that band from him, man. Oh, Lou. <laughs> no, Lou. <laughs> what else came out? What came out in 98? No. Uh, oh, man. All right. So Converge, When Forever Comes Crashing Down. Botch no, with cool. American Nervoso. More Earth Crisis, Crisis, <laughs> the Dillinger Escape Plan with Under the Running Board, nice. uh, Zeo with Splinter Shards, The Birth of Separation, Caven drops Until Your Heart Stops Beyond Hypothermia, um, some God Forbid, some more Coalesce, and some All Out War too. So oh, 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 yeah. the best. <laughs> uh, I remember I saw them at Hospice so far. I didn't know who the hell they were, and. I forget who just finished playing. I think Devil Driver. And uh, I went to the bathroom. I come back and I just see the fucking guitars sweeping, shredding with the guitar behind his head. I was like, that's fucking sick. Dude. <laughs> oh, that's so that sick, is... dude. I, I saw them at the Blackthorn on Williamsbridge Road in the Bronx in like Whoa. 99. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> they played with like a local pop punk band. It was very weird. <laughs> I think it was Tibbs on Anthony. Oh, no. <laughs> those are the best though oh yeah those big those big genre shows back in the day were amazing oh, yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah i saw a mirror at a teen center with uh end well i had no idea <laughs> i was like oh like i don't know what this is it's just a bunch of people throwing each other around but i mean it was, it was cool it was cool you know karate cinema yeah it's so weird the good old days so when you yeah. see like bands like they're like huge now and it's like they all came from like the same place when everyone starts a band and you want to get to the same point you know yeah times were also different you know we didn't have youtube and facebook and all this other shit you know back then you you 
created music and you had to go to shows and hand yeah. out uh, flyers like a and walk shit. in and a head, exactly. head yeah, you know, listen to my shit listen check to my this shit. out and Absolutely. you know it's it's uh it's it's a whole different world now and um you know come coming back into music in my 30s it's it's not like how it was growing up you you almost have to you have to compete with people who are more technologically inclined than you are to be heard it's it's not how it yeah. used to be in other words yeah, the marketing's completely different now. Like you, you kind of have to like know like SEO and like all that. You gotta be like a whole like marketing firm almost more than a band, I would argue at this point. That's that's what I see. Like the biggest bands, like that's kind of what it is too. Like they really know how to like make all that stuff work for them. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. kind of been my job. Of the band. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just want to drink beers and write some riffs. You know? <laughs> and I don't I don't think it's necessarily bad because there are pros to it too, but I do miss the days where like I always talk about one of my fondest memories is you'd get like a trust kill album and you'd open it up and it always had the little insert with like all the other albums that were coming out around that time. And I'd always like look at that first and be like oh shit like what other bands do i not know about what bands do i know that are dropping new shit that i that i wasn't aware of and like that's how i put stuff on my radar and then i'd like hit up limewire or whatever <laughs> and, well, was yeah. <laughs> but back then when, when you saw it was like trust kill ferret records victory it was yep. almost like a stamp of approval like yep. this, like this is shit. gonna fucking yeah. rule and you're gonna love it like yep. the first time i ever listened to misery signals you know, it was like, I, I saw that Ferret record thing. I was like, holy shit, you know? Yeah. And it was like, you know, Seven Angels, Seven Plates. So you knew it was going to be fucking amazing. But I saw them for the first time with uh, Zayo, Every Time I Die, right when uh, Hot Damn came out. Yes. And then Dillinger was on their headlining tour uh, for Miss Machine. I think it was B.B. Yeah. King's. Oh, shit. Uh, oh, in dude. the city. B.B. King's was And that jam. was just, like, back then, when you went to shows, it was like, you you had to do your research on these bands if you never heard of them. And like you wanted to know their whole discography yep. by the time you went to the show, yeah. In the crowd fucking going crazy and screaming all the lyrics yeah. and shit, you know? Yeah, and yeah, you actually spent the time to do that too. Like I still buy physical albums, as you can see behind me, but like I used to, you know, pour over them and like sit and listen and like memorize all the lyrics. And I still remember yeah. all those albums like word for word now. Like you don't necessarily get that same experience. For no, sure. But... I, that's why, like, when bands release music and they don't, I notice a lot of bands don't put their lyrics up. Um, you know, when you're on, I, I use iTunes just because I'm too lazy to switch to Spotify. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, like, when a band doesn't put their lyrics up, like, I kind of get butthurt about it because, like, I want to sit there and I want to read the lyrics as it's happening in the song. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm connected to the music a little more. And lately it's kind of just like, okay, every two months we're dropping a single, who gives a fuck? There's no, yeah. there's no emotional connection to your shit anymore. Well, except yeah. for now. I love, I love they, drop, awesome. they drop stuff like <laughs> oh, yeah. every, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> some, some bands are still doing it right. Yep. Yep. Well, I do want to, I don't want to keep going year by year here, but I do want to at least highlight 1999 right. since we, of course, a bunch of us just dropped talked about opposite of December. So like, to me, this is the year that like things really solidify in my mind. Cause that year you get opposite of December calculating infinity. Uh, yeah. uh, we are Romans from botch. Oh, uh, yeah. Zeo's liberate yeah. to X and Ferris, um, under oath with active depression to a uh -huh. lesser degree, but still an important one and hopes fall with the frailty of words, which I don't understand. Uh, my uh, hopes. I love them. I hope satellite years but we'll keep going we'll keep going yeah like what was the ep with april left with silence oh that's one of my favorites too that's like the transitional ep it's almost like their broken ep because their sound shifts at that point that was um i have that too i have a it's physical so copy of that one cool, man like that i remember hearing that when i was a kid and like just no wings to speak of that's what yeah, it is the way that they like did the clean vocals and then like the just everything about it yep. was I was like, whoa, like this is it, you know? Yeah. I'm a little bummed that they kind of disown the frailty of words. Cause even if you look up, I remember I went to their site at one point and looked up their discography from there and they don't even list the frailty of words on there. Maybe that's changed now, but I was like, dude, that, that record goes hard. I, I fucking love that debut. I know whoa. it doesn't sound like their later stuff, but 
it's it's a banger. <laughs> but I don't think anyone that was on that album is even in the band. Yeah, I bet that may be true too. We had plenty of that. Yeah. Zayo too. I mean, Zayo like has had a full changeover of their. It was fun. I did as part of my tier list, like saying what the lineup was each album, and it it changes so many times. Like they they've been pretty solid for the last you know couple years with all the newer stuff, but their early days like. They went through, they got, they did get to a point where there were no original members from the first album left anymore. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. His name is Scott, the uh, guitar player. He's been there since um, Blood and Fire or Liberace album. Yeah, one of them. And the drummer had been there for like all the albums up through, I want to say, The Funeral of God. And then I think he That's left yeah. after he that. Left. He left yeah. the band. He was a sick drummer, though, man. Yeah. He was a sick drummer. Wasn't one of the dudes from Juliana Theory? In the yeah, album? he was one of the original was, guitar players. Brett, yep. Brett Detar? Yep, something like that. <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. I remember <laughs> saying his name I'm at some point. I'm not every, every member of the band's names. I'm not like, oh, Tom knows, like, like every Yeah, I'm like a music everything. dork. It's, it's, it's insane. <laughs> when I was a kid, I really wanted to be Matt Pinfield. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we all had those people that we kind of, like, hooked on to. But yeah it was it would the other thing i was thinking about as i was going through this was like i've talked about this before but like who's the metalcore big four because i feel like for thrash it's kind of easy because like yeah. most of the forerunners are also like the biggest bands but metalcore mm -hmm. is a little bit different because i've always like thrown as i lay dying in there but they don't show up until I um, would. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest would, with you oh, um, with them no. uh frail words collapse was an awesome album oh yeah dude i love but, all of their albums <laughs> every album every album of bands that wanted to become you know metal court whatever that word's become nowadays it's it's kind of been like the same recycled five seven eight riff across the board for the next 15 years yeah so it's almost, it's that it's that album that was amazing when it came out but it kind of almost bastardized the genre for lack of better words it it, it um i don't know it, it's everybody became the cookie cutter as laid down well, that, well that yeah and that's like i feel like that's a pro and a con because it's like that's why i put them in there is they're one of the bands that like they defined that sound and then everybody wanted to have that sound for better yeah. or worse probably for worse in, in many cases because that did become oh. like this oversaturated kind of style but it's like they sort of defined that sort of later era. But it's like if I'm trying to define this the way that Thrash does it, then we'd be like, OK, it's like Converge, Earth Crisis, mm -hmm. Zayo and Integrity or something like that. But that doesn't feel right to me because it's like how many how many Every people like really all the bands you have to have integrity on that list on the top. As opposed to everything that was just mentioned. Almost worth it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just like, it's like, all right, I just, they're you like, got it. You got it. You know, they're like, like, so, I don't know. They're like always like a hardcore band to me. Well, that's the same thing. Like, they they get overlooked as well. 108. Yep. They're like a Krishna core yep. band, but they were doing crazy metalcore shit in like 94. Like, shit. but they were also blending it with weird, like, Hare Krishna drums. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> John, you, and you, uh, you know who they were uh, influenced by? Who? The Cro-Mags. Oh, there you go. See, <laughs> bringing it all back around. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's like, I mean, people, they've been blending hardcore and metal since like the 80s, right? But it's like, you know, like, like crossover thrash or like when there was bands like leeway like all the, like basically thrash bands but they were hardcore as well and i don't know i just feel like it's like people have been doing this forever as long as the both yeah. genres have been popular and like it's only like more recently that like metalcore is like you know it's like a bad word like core is a four-letter word or if you even say like post like after shit was good you know yeah exactly yeah. 
I, I just feel like it's like when okay when there's a band that if they're like kind of defining a new sound right so that like first generation that like they are you know like the original metalcore they were like all right i like napalm death i like you know this thrash band i like in flames like i want to put it together but then like once you get to like the first of third or fourth generation it's like i feel like if people that are listening to the music that they're like trying to play like it's not going to be good i could I kind of see that there, there are bands though. I feel like that are kind of coming back around and bringing some like new vitality back to it. And I'm not sure if that negates what you're trying to say or not, but. No, I mean, well, uh, go, what bands go on? <laughs> yes, please let, let me get on my note. <laughs> well, leave. Obviously, I mean, I've been wearing the hat forever, and that it's not even okay. out yet. So, <laughs> no. But honestly, though, I was really impressed, like listening to Dead Language. Um, I've I've heard a bunch of stuff um, from Dan uh, from other projects he's worked on, and I honestly do think that this is like one of the best things that I've I've heard him send my way, and I love the mix of influences and now that we've been like talking about zeo a lot like i'm kind of even hearing a little bit of that in the in the blueprint which i don't think was something that came up when when you and i were kind of chatting on facebook dan yeah. but like well, i am hearing that like the dynamic range of it and how like you get these more kind of drifting kind of almost again post metal -y sort of sections mixed in with the more aggressive stuff I'll be honest with you, I don't really listen to Zayo. But the rest of them, the rest of them. Somebody's got it in their DNA. So that's, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I guess my screen kind of sounds like his, like the high one. Yeah. Especially how it was done on this record. I don't know, it's like really weird. It's like, we all, like, we all love metalcore and it's like we love hardcore, but then there's like those, like, trinkets of bands where it's like they did something that was like completely different so we're like let's try to do something yeah. completely different i mean it was like all right this is your favorite band this is your favorite band your favorite band your mine whatever and then we just kind of like like i'll just throw this and, like, <laughs> and then it, i don't know it's like like thinking of like even all the bands you've listed so far it's like oh shit like i forgot like some even existed because like musical tastes like always change i feel like especially like if you're like a guitar player or like a drummer or bass player vocalist like you kind of just like bring in like different vibes of like what's going on in, in the present but you're still like reflecting on your past you know what i'm saying and it's just i don't know like hearing all these bands the, the zero shit that's all him that's all that guy right there <laughs> <laughs> you know but i don't know it's uh I, I really do think you can listen to this album start to finish and kind of just pick out how old we are because, <laughs> because you can hear all of the influences and you're like yeah these guys definitely grew up in like 98 to 2006 <laughs> yeah, abs absolutely because it does sound really different from i'd say a lot of the other like when i get newer metalcore bands sending me stuff like it doesn't usually sound like this like you you can hear those kind of like more I don't know, because it was just a different sound back then. It's not the, uh, you know, what I usually get now is either the like periphery blueprints where it's all genty, or it's the like kill switch and engage blueprint where it's like at the gates core. Like it's usually one of those two things. And it's rarer that I get something that has more of that glass jaw, Zayo kind of vibe where it's, it's a little bit more sort of like, I don't know if experimental is the best word, but that's what the earlier stuff kind of is to me is that it was still sort of toying with a bunch of different ideas and didn't pigeonhole itself in one particular style. That's that when me and Dan were talking about like, what the fuck were we going to name these seven <laughs> songs? You know? um, it was, you know, it was a million like lame, for lack of a better word, lame ass names that were just like, nah, this doesn't really like describe what it is. That's why we call it dead language because we want almost like Latin, like we wanted to bring back the shit that we grew up listening to and but give it like a, a modern flavor. And, you know, hopefully people are into it and, you know, we, yeah. we all hit the nail on the head, who knows, but that's what we were going for. We just wanted to, for lack of better words, we just wanted to 
sound like fucking poison the well and the blood and <laughs> saying, I'm, I'm oh, always open to that whatever yeah. fucking band you know but like you know maybe have a little bit of like a black metal twist to it at the same time and you know just bring back the shit we grew up listening yeah. to like when you bought an album you fucking listened to it front to back you don't just listen to the fucking single mm-hmm. that was on you know insert whatever punk rock vids.com now i'm taking it back right <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, know, you, you didn't just like listen to the single like you i i like the 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 b-sides are like the the deep cuts those are the songs that i like i don't give a fuck about the singles That's you know true, yeah yeah i usually skip the singles i like you know like for instance with the let me let me, let me, let me continue to uh you know zayo um you know <laughs> the, the latest album i like the last track it's fucking like nine and a half minutes of the same riff but like I get off to that shit. You know? <laughs> I'm excited, you know. Like when when we're writing music, it's usually me saying like, "Yo, let's let's play this riff for like five minutes," and Tom's like, "Yo, shut the fuck up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> let's get out of here." Yeah. <laughs> I, I will say, I think it is good timing for this, though, because the other thing that I was thinking about a lot when I first put this album on was Loathe. And Loathe is like totally blowing up right now. I've heard a couple and, of songs on They're actually a pretty good yeah, they're, Yeah, they're, they're, they they're, have like struck a chord because they've got that whole like Deftones vibe to their sound, too. And so like new metal is just like super in again. Like that's the other thing is like people are. I mean, we, I just watched fucking Limp Biscuit do their Lollapalooza. <laughs> We paid 123 bucks to go see. Oh yeah, dude! Like that shit. (laughs) Seeing him on stage, all gray hair and the the hipster outfit, and still saying the same lyrics. He wrote. It was like everyone's like, "Why the fuck does he look like an old man?" But like nobody gives a shit about West Borland, you know. Yeah. And and he's still saying the same lyrics, which just don't sound right coming out of that body at this point. But it's like people are into that now. Like people are all about. Like, you know, new metal, speaking of core being a bad word, like new metal was a bad word for a long time. But now, like this generation that came up on new metal is are the ones sort of like running the scene. So that's all like cool again. So you've got stuff speaking of bands that I think are like making it fresh and interesting again. I think Code Orange is another big one and they've got tons of new metal influence. And then again, you've got Loathe with this whole like Deftone side of their sound. But I think you guys would be great on a bill with a band like them because they still have that like back and forth of the kind of like really mm. heavy intense shit, but then also the more kind of drifting sort of ethereal atmospheric kind of side of their sound too. And that seems to be striking a chord. So if you get a chance to have uh, uh, open with, with someone, I would say loathe <laughs> would be the ones to go with. I've only heard like one or two songs on them. I gotta, I gotta check it out again, Dude. but uh what yeah, I, thought, I thought they were really good. No, check, is really cool. I mean, check out the whole, yeah, the whole last album was, that was one of my favorite albums of they're instrumental. Like, no, they're like, they kind of remind me of like, if Hold nothing on. went metal. Does that make sense? What? What, what with metal? I couldn't hear it. But nothing, like the, the, the clean shit that they do is like really catchy, but it's like more on this ambient level of like what like nothing does. You know what, um, you get what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, kind like, of. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and that the vocals like are really uh I don't know. I, he showed me Loathe and I listened to them and I'm like, wow, these guys like really know what they're doing. I don't know, because it's very different. Yeah. Like as opposed to like every other thing that like has been coming out lately. I well, don't know. I think it was I think I was talking to you when I said like I heard that album and I was like, this is like the first band that I've heard that really like carries the torch of like deftones glass jaw like it's really because there's plenty of people try to imitate them and it's awful and i yep. think that you know <laughs> there might be why like we all i was too scared to like write an album like that for the past 20 years let's do it now um but uh yeah like they oh dude they're just so they're so good i would i would love that yeah, and I, again, I like hear a similar DNA coming through, but but not like exactly the same either, because you don't want that. You've kind of got like your own specific niche with it. But I think again, with like the right, you know, with this modern age of of how to market the album and get it out there, I think it's awesome that you had the single on Metal Injection, and it was definitely the single I would have picked too. You want to hit them hard with that that heavy track first, and then, um, you know, get them get them with the softer stuff later on to see the different 
range. Yeah, some of, some of the uh, the B side cuts. I don't know. We I joke. I say that it's like a it's like an emo mullet. It's, <laughs> it's metal in the front, oh, like emo, <laughs> metal in the front, emo in the back. Yeah. Oh man, that's great. Oh my god. Oh, I like that. <laughs> that's some well, of my favorite you, stuff I'm, too. I'm really glad that like you're digging it and and yeah dude. thank you yeah no uh, legitimately too like i always i kind of half joke when i say this but i'm dead serious i've made this comment a few times when i've had like people i know send me stuff i'm always halfway in the back of my mind being like fuck is this gonna suck and i'm gonna have to like pretend that i like it? <laughs> well, <obviously that laughs> it's just does. to not hurt feelings but legitimately though no like i heard this and it, it like totally defied all expectations not not that i have low expectations because again i love like as you know we became friends over like reaching out to you from the hudson horror and absolutely loving the sound of that band um but yeah like i'm and, and this is just it's totally on my wavelength is the other thing too because like i think the music I enjoy listening to the most right now, even though like I really love finding weird, more experimental stuff like Igor and Psy and like, I love that stuff. But as far as like my go-to when I just want to throw something on in the car or at the gym or whatever, it's going to be some metallic hardcore. Usually it's going to be like Harm's Way or Jesus Peace or uh, Code Orange, Loathe, um, Vane. Um, I guess they're now Vane.fm is their oh, name. I, now. I love Vane. Yeah, dude, Vane, they've got that like new metal. I, know, yeah, I still have not listened to them. Everyone no, says true. they're fucking amazing. I'm going to give them a chance. No, it's it's pretty cool, cool, man. Super cool. raunchy, heavy, like new metal influence, metallic hardcore, but also with like this kind of like digitized sound infused to it too. I guess I'd even almost equate it to like some of the Dillinger escape plans, more sort of like electronic sounding songs in a way but yeah they're they're sick i'm looking forward to hear more stuff from them off it for a second have you heard greg's uh latest solo album the solo stuff yeah i, I reviewed them it was really good i did comment that it felt more like a compilation than an album so to speak because every song is kind of all over the place but each song taken individually i loved like there was not a song on there that i didn't like i like that song uh heart free it's like it's a weird one. It's like super poppy in the beginning, and then it, it goes yeah. off on like a uh, depressing monologue kind of thing. I was like, "Hey, I, I what was it? This what was that one song you showed me? That, that was the song. song. No, Black Queen. Oh no, oh. Black. This other project. That oh, band's amazing. Oh yeah, yeah. that. that we saw them live. Uh, Dude, Greg. Greg is just so talented, man. It's it's crazy really his range, and it's also wild to think of being being the Dillinger Escape Plan. You know, losing your first vocalist, getting Mike Patton to do an EP with you and then kind of being like, maybe, oh shit, where do we go from here? And then somehow you managed to strike gold again and pick up Greg, who is like, I would venture to say he's almost as talented a vocalist as Mike Patton. He's not quite there because Mike Patton is just like the God to me, but it's wild. For sure. I just remember seeing the Dillinger escape point. Like I would see interviews and shit. Mm -hmm. I was like, yo, it's Big little fucking problem. <laughs> he's I like a little guy. I saw him in fucking uh, Long Island, and I was like, "Yo, he's like up to hearing me, bro." I'm like, "Damn." Yeah, so he's cool. he's Damn. probably still kick all the asses. Yeah, dude, he's he's just like a little bear cub, dude. He's just like solid. <laughs> He'll take you down. I think uh, just like, well, I think it was like 2005 in the Virgin Music <laughs> Store. <laughs> Where he freaking run oh, yeah. That shit was amazing. Oh, was that was insane. amazing. I was like, dude, I've wanted to do that for years, but I, I'm like, I probably weigh too much. I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, I remember seeing that. I was like, dude, this is because like, like when, them, when they got so started and like early converge, like people got like stabbed outside of like shows <laughs> and stuff. You know what I mean? It was like a different scene. There was like like all right, like, fuck a safe space. It's like, I'm going like to try and not get... <laughs> they canceled Hellfest one year because there was, like, there was, oh, like, uh... Bad Luck 13. Yeah, though. some oh, shit. Dude, it was, yeah. Oh, I bought my yeah. tickets, and I was like, man, I really wanted to fucking go, too. Yeah. Well, I think Code Orange is bringing some of that energy back, too. I mean, there was that big story a couple years ago where that, that poor chick got, like, her jaw broken by the guy with the steel oh, yeah. boot. And then I went and saw them. They uh, opened for Meshuggah 
and they fucking like tore that venue apart man like they were all crowd surfing with their instruments and just like doing flips into the audience like just i i've seen the dillinger escape plan perform live and honestly i think they cranked it up a notch from that based on at least the show that i saw it was i I think i went to dillinger's last show in new york city and code orange opened up for them and they were great but we, were they Dave, kids then? No, it was like three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. daughters opened up. I, oh, you know, we, didn't I, talk, we didn't even talk I, about I, them. Let's call a spade a spade. Ain't nobody fucking better than Dillinger, bro. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> absolutely. They're out of control, man. You knew it was Dillinger. Yeah, when you you, saw yeah they came on. <laughs> I remember they opened with Prancers. So it was like, dig it, dig it. Oh, that's such a great opener. Seconds. He goes, "Are you ready?" And then it was a rap, dude. Oh, that's that song is like built for that too. It really was, man. Oh. I remember buying beers and then like you know I go back into the crowd and then somebody would kick me and my beer just like <laughs> all over me. Another fifteen dollar tall boy. And then, I got you know I was just like I'm just gonna hang out in the back tonight. <laughs> Are, are there any other newer metalcore bands you would say like are are really killing it right now? Yeah, I I I I'll be completely honest with you. I haven't uh, I haven't listened to metalcore. In a what? Are, oh, um, wait, is it? What about Blister? You know that band you sent me the other day? That's like Poison Well and Steroids. Yeah, I sent it. Well, no, that I sent you Scalp recently. Oh, you sent me Scalp, dude. Scalp. I think you like, had me listen to Scalp. I don't remember Blistered. I'm not sure you okay, sent me that so, one. Blister is like, yeah, it was the one that like when you he had the the talking and then the screaming, mm-hmm. and you were like, I, I love that. Um, <laughs> I think that they did a really good job. I don't think they put out a record in a while. I don't know if they're still a band, but I remember hearing them, and I was like, all right, this is like 1997, 1999, um, like really true to it, and I enjoyed it. Blister, are they a Butterfly? I'll Are we considering Code Orange is like a newer metalcore band, like officially? So yeah. I would say they're the biggest right now because like that tour they're doing with absolutely, Pulse, but not like that yeah. fucking insane. Yeah, that's they tour with Deftones. Well, like two years ago. So, see, that's like, they're one of those bands too that I was referencing, where it's like they not only know how to write really cool music, but they really know like how to make the right next move. Like them doing the whole like WWE thing, that was brilliant. They're like um, a yeah, and then they're in the studio right now with Billy Corgan, apparently. So oh that's like God. gonna be an element of the next album uh, in some way. So it's like they're always like oh. really, it's like they're playing 4D chess with with their <laughs> with their music right now in terms of like not only how do we how do we top the last album musically, but also like how do we tease something or do something unexpected that's going to really fit in with our audience. And again, I think when I heard about the WWE thing, I was like, that is so fucking genius. Cause those are all like new metal heads right there. Like yeah. that came up on new metal and wrestling. And now you're going to like bring them this new wave of like that sound. exact sound. <laughs> all I watch is wrestling. <laughs> oh man. I, 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 I was at the show where they played Alistair Blackout with the singer from uh, Incendiary. Oh, they, they, oh I'm they jealous. Black theme as well. And yeah, that my, is my fucking girl, dope. Uh, that's wow. awesome. My girl's super I look, like, actually, in, getting, Incendiary, into, like, they are an excellent, like, I guess they're a hardcore yeah. band, but they're playing yeah. metalcore. Yeah. I would say that like, they're one of the top. I'm not, I'm not sure if I, that sounds vaguely familiar. So I may have listened and I just can't remember. They're, they're Sounds familiar. Though. Long Island bands. So they we really got like two or three records. They're, they're, I yeah. mean, they're not really new anymore. Well, in the but last like, 10 years. No, they were, I think, maybe before that. But the, the, it's, the, like, uh, it's like metalcore with like Zach De La Roca singing for it. Your Rage? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The other two bands I'd throw out there that had two of my favorite metalcore albums of last year, and they're more on the melodic side. Um, so if you like Under Oath, Polaris is fantastic because they're almost like a second coming of Under Oath. They're out of Australia. 
really sick just really tight songwriting it's not the most original thing it's definitely following that same blueprint but they just do it so well that i just don't care and then the other one too is uh make them suffer from kind of the gentier side of the sound okay that first not the first album <laughs> sorry he's all not, not the first album uh never blue i remember one of my boys who like does not listen to metal he just had some random shit on and it like came on i think it was like 89.5 or some shit and they played <laughs> fucking, oh, yeah, 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 nice. WSU, and they played wow. fucking never bloom and i listened to the album i was like dude this shit is amazing dude. <laughs> yeah man <laughs> I remember, like every song came out, I was doing like the. This is fire, bro. They're oh. they're really good, and and on their last album, they've really mastered the kind of back and forth between the main vocalist doing the kind of like architect sound, and then they switch over to the female vocalist and keyboardist doing the more like epic symphonic kind of parts of the sound, and it's so good. Like they've just totally nailed that entire vibe in such a great way. Because I like both sides of the sound. Like, I listen to really raunchy, like, just ridiculously heavy metalcore stuff. And then, you know, outside of that genre, too. But then I also love the really, like, sappy kind of, like, tearjerker kind of stuff where I'm like, I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah, that's <laughs> I love that shit. I can't get enough. I want to feel like shit when I listen to music. You know? <laughs> well, then, The Crimson Corridor is definitely the album for you, for sure. That's my album of the year so far. It's it's it, it's made my list so far. It was, it was on mine for... The first half so we'll see if it makes it to the end but it's looking like it probably will we, up Zale for about 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we could keep going too well i could honestly i probably could talk forever i do have a hard out at uh in about 11 minutes but i thought it it might be fun to kind of circle back real quick so big right. four <laughs> oh go for it you were gonna say something I was, I was, I was, I was back, Jen Saki. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, big four. Who would you put in it? Damn, dude. Honestly, as of right now, like this day to date. As of like, you know, really going back to the the origins, and I guess in terms of the bands you feel like are the most important, the four most important bands to the metalcore genre that are also like, cause that's the big four, right? Is not only are they the most important, but also they're like well-known too, which yeah. is what throws a wrench in it for me too. Cause I, again, if we're going back early, I almost feel like Zayo should be in there, but they're not well-known enough. Like you, you get plenty of metalcore fans who don't know who the fuck Zayo is. Yeah. So that kind of rules them out. Cause everybody knows who Metallica, Anthrax, um, fucking, why am I blanking? Uh, Slayer and who am I? Megadeth. You know, everybody knows those bands. Even if you don't listen to metal, you've heard of them. All, all four of those. But uh, for me, honestly, Misery Signals has to be in there. Yeah. Uh, they have to be in there. Norma Jean for me. Norma Jean, me. Bless the Martyr, that fucking album. That, that, that thing is yeah. insane. Yeah. I mean, probably, I, I would say Converge. Poison Converge has to be in there. Like that's my one, that's the one, if, if anyone wanted to change any of the other three, Converge has to be in there. That's like my, my non-negotiable one, basically. But go ahead, I interrupted you. Kill switch, engage, maybe? Just because like that, Alive or Just Breathing, like that record, like. Kind of changed the game at it's, that time. It, yeah, it did. No one was doing that then. And They really and so are that album is the origin of like, again, like I was saying, sort of like taking the, the melodic death metal riffs, those like Gothenburg riffs and applying them to the metalcore formula. Cause yeah, nobody, nobody before then was doing it. And then everybody after that was doing it. <laughs> and like, yeah. uh, like the and they toured with Slayer too. I mean, like pretty early on in their career, that's pretty wild. Like the, the other, the, the good guy, bad guy, uh, like vocal patterns. With between like verse chorus, yep. it's like, oh, I'm angry, but now I'm <laughs> like I feel like they kind of made that uh they they got it in vogue, you know. Yeah. Kill switch brought it to the mainstream is yeah. In, in yeah. So we're going kill switch, Norma Jean, Converge, Poison the Well, Misery, Poison Poison the well. well. Misery Signals. Misery Signals. Nah, Poison the Well before. Yeah. Before. Honorable what? mention to what? Misery <laughs> Signals. <laughs> Misery Signals is another one I would argue is not well known enough. Like they're big, I mean, but they're not as big. But then I run yeah. into this too, where I am shocked because we all like know Poison the Well. 
And we know how amazing Poison the Well is and how important they are to kind of the development of the movement. But I can't tell you how many people I've run into and I bring up Poison the Well and they do not know who that is. Like I even, we have a discord for my YouTube channel and it's a bunch of other like metal content creators too, in addition to fans. And I had to school them all on Poison the Well. Like none of them had listened to Poison the Well before which is shocking to me, but that's sort of the reality of it is they're not that big of a band, unfortunately. I had that issue five years ago. I moved back to New York and I went to a show. I forgot who the hell it was, but um, there's this kid outside and he's wearing like a whatever band t-shirt. You know, we're shooting the shit. We're smoking a cigarette. We're talking. And uh, I'm like, oh yeah, Poison Well. He's like, who? Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, for me, it's like, I know it's, it's it blows like, my mind. Moment, you know? I remember uh, when they were when they did the reunion when they played surf and skate and they did Brooklyn before that. You were there too, I was there. right? That so was them in like uh, Code Orange, Code Orange, Orange. And yeah. and So wow. I ran into wow. so, wow. I ran into someone I knew. Holy shit! And I was like, oh, I was like, you're here, like you're cool. You're a Poison the Well fan. They were like, no, I've never listened to them. I'm here for Code Orange, and I was like, what was it, Code Orange Kids? No, it was called Orange. Yeah. <laughs> this is like King came out. I am King. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like the I like the earlier band name, Code Orange Kids. I thought it was, it was tough. Yeah, it's like... now, I got a question. <laughs> Where would you consider Snapcase oh, to be snap. a part? Like, <laughs> what? Serious? I mean, we're throwing in a curveball oh, late in the oh, game. Oh, oh, no. No. <laughs> I Snapcase with AFI ruling. Yeah, Baller, I saw with <laughs> Alien <laughs> Emperor. <laughs> Oh man, Alien Ant Farm. Hell yeah. yeah. On my 16th birthday. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I got really excited with that snap case thing. <laughs> I will tell you, just I, I had to throw in the shade too. Uh, you notice in, in talking through all the years of releases and our potential big four and all of this, what band has not come up that claimed that they started Metalcore? <laughs> oh, I can't even remember who said that. <laughs> Tray you, a tray you, dude. Fuck a tray you, dude. Yo, <laughs> I, I, like no, I yeah. did like suicide. Yeah. I, I'm fine with that. I know plenty of people. Ooh. I never really liked them, but never I just thought it was so funny when oh, when yeah. they were like, dude, yeah, we started no, 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 this. I I love them up until uh, Death Grip. <laughs> as soon as Death Grip came out, I was like, all right, fuck I'm with them. <laughs> I was, uh, dude, they're the first I never I liked their EP because yo, their EP was like. Like straight up, like HM2 guitar. Yeah, I'll stuff. bet it was a lot harder. Like all the bands started harder, and then they realized that they could kind of be something else. Right. But and yeah, they're, 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 they're not old for where they had to start paying for things, and they were like, "All right, how can we yep. make money?" Yeah, yep. we'll which is fine. But man, <laughs> <laughs> listening, I I listened to their new album that came out this year, and man, it's like <laughs> it's like Papa Roach or something. Like that. Alex it's really band. bad. I'm sorry, bro. Get the fuck out of here. It's so bad. But he's I mean, he's so, not a great vocalist though. He's no, yeah, but look, that's like the fucking like, like James Hetfield quit Metallica. Here's their new yeah, album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 they, I, I give a shit. I love. <laughs> I give a shit. I love Metallica. For for the record, too, Atreyu did not drop an album until 2001. So that's why we didn't even get to them. And that was the same year as Jane Doe. So as far as I'm get into Scarlet yet, first of all, well, yeah. What about Alexis on Fire? Hey, hey. They're not metal. Screen. No, they're more like. Yeah, they're not metal. What is that? That's uh, there is a word for <laughs> what they are. I can't think of what it is. That's fucking metalcore. It's not. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, this is where things get the, get I'm not difficult. Gonna throw them up there with fucking Converge, you know? Well, Converge I didn't like, say that. Converge you know? is tough, you know. Converge is that big dog. Yeah, like, yo, yeah. dude, like I'm, I'm Converge, just... like super skinny with the long sleeve shirt. And, <laughs> you know, like, Jacob Bannon, he is a man. man. I, I love him. I love him too. I love that whole band. I'm just oh, saying, man. man. Hell yeah. I like Converge's first record as like. Blood for Blood riffs on it. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> I saw Blood for Blood once. Their early shit is wild. Could have sworn you were yeah, yeah, Blood for Blood. Without, you without, like yeah, without, uh, the oh, no. assault charges. Yeah, totally. Man. Yeah. Well, let's, <laughs> yeah. let's, let's just get off that topic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it sounds like we're going with what was it? Norma Jean, Converge, okay. 
Yes. Uh, kill switch engage. Yes. And who is the fourth one? I'm forgetting. Boys in the world. You got it. Yeah, you have to put Boys Even in though the it was world. only their first like two hours. Which one? The EP. Boys in the well. Oh, yeah. Poison the well. We're going to put Poison the well. I mean, I'm happy with that, but it's a hard one. It really is. Hard. It's always hard if somebody's like, pick four, you have to pick six. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, especially like something about this, like I can do this for almost any other genre, but I can't do it for this one. Like you, you say melodic death metal, I can do that real quick. Like most other genres, it just works out for some reason. This one, it's just much, much more difficult. Some people would argue too, like, what about Dillinger Escape Plan? But then I'm like, I kind of put them on like math core on a completely oh, yeah, different yeah, so, yeah. And, and yeah. then they, in their later shit, like it, it turned into so much more than that as well. Yeah, they're yeah. Always dope, but they're like very like just like no, this is. I feel like it's very mathematical. Every like, album, yeah. everything, different very. Sound. It, it's it's too intense to be classified. Like, yeah, I think it's tough it's just good. because of like the nostalgia to like so much of it, right? Like this is these are records that we've been listening to for twenty years. It's like tough to be like, all right, yeah, these ones. Yeah, it's yeah. it's pretty much impossible. But suffice it to say, like. We just did it. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> we, we did it. He's my favorite metal core band. Yeah, yeah, wow. I don't even know what we are. <laughs> yeah, actually. Beyond that. How would you label our band? I, I have the same problem I have again with Loathe, where it's like there's definitely like a foundation of metal core, but there's a lot other stuff going on there too. So, but I don't know what, what else I would call it. So it's so, like metalcore asterisk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, kind of like, and and I I do that kind of with Zeo a little bit again too, especially with the newer stuff. Like it's just a lot of different things. So it's one of those times where like when I have to tell someone about the band, I can't just say like, oh they're they're this like they're this thing. I would I would have to go on and be like, well it's kind of got like a little bit of this band and a little bit of this band. That's why I can't, some people like poo poo the whole like for fans of thing because they're like, oh it's like too superficial and I don't like being compared to other bands and whatever. But I'm like, to me that's like the quickest route to get somebody interested in something usually is if I can think of things that they already like and how can I like describe it in like, yeah, mash these two things together that totally sound like they shouldn't go together. And that's what you get. And that's usually when I get the reaction in the comments of like, oh, fuck, I need to go listen to that. That sounds amazing. <laughs> it's like the uh, it's like the digital version of the trust kill sampler. Yeah, it's that's like, I, that's yeah. that's exactly what it is. Yeah. So, yeah, you can you can <laughs> FFO us. Dude. Stand by I will you. continue to do that. I think I even did that in the, uh, you know, the rundown of the stuff coming out in August too, but I, I will be covering it in other stuff as well. Unfortunately, I do need to go. I could probably talk for hours and hours. So maybe we'll have to do a part two. Maybe we'll talk math course sometime. That would be fun. Oh, yeah, let's um, do it. <laughs> oh, Tom, Tom was in uh, Detached the Islands with me. Oh, yeah. fuck yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Yeah, speaking of. And then we quit. And <laughs> we quit. We broke up. <laughs> did, our, did our own thing. No, they didn't. I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right, well, man. Yeah. Thank you all for doing this again. This is Leave. Get on the hat. And their new album, Dead Language, is coming out this Friday, August 6th. And you should go check it out. Hell Thanks, yeah. guys. All right.